أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ من حته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يؤدي حقه المجتهدون ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وشفيع ذنوبنا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيته التجبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد كان الله تبارك وتعالى وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولو أن أحد القرى آمنوا واتقوا لفتحنا عليهم بركات من السماء والأرض آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity to be with Mu'mineen and Mu'minat of the Masumin Islamic Center. Especially, this is special because we have two consecutive nights so I can cover a topic and I'm not under, under pressure to finish everything within one majlis. Inshallah, we are planning to discuss a topic which is dear to me because every Muslim in the month of Ramadan tries and struggles to make sure that he or she does not commit sins. Although committing sins is a struggle throughout the year, but more so in the month of Ramadan, because we would like to fast with the spirit of fasting, which requires that we control our tongue, we control our ears, we control our thinking, we, con- we have a, you know, sincere thinking, we control our steps, what we do, what we say, right? So there is that struggle that we try to do in the month of Ramadan, that even if I am provoked, even if somebody were to swear at me, even if somebody is trying to be mean against me, I will try to maintain my cool and just keep the focus that I'm fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would like to have the fasting both in you know, spirit and also in essence, right? That I, I want to make sure that I should not only stay hungry or thirsty, but also I try to control my limbs, as the hadith say, right? So our discussion will be that how do my sins affect me, my family, and my community? When I commit a sin, billah, when I commit a zam or ism, if I disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how does it affect me, my family, and also my community? That will discussion, inshallah, whatever we can cover in the two majlises. The ayat of Quran which I recited is from surah number 7 and right in the beginning of the ninth sipara. Surah number 7, surah al-A'raf, ayat number 96. Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Walau anna ahad al-Qura amanu wa attaqaw la fatahna alayhim barakati min as-samai wal-ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if the people of the towns had been faithful and muttaqeen and practiced taqwa, la fatahna alayhim we would have opened for, to them blessings from the heaven and the earth. So you can see clearly Allah says that yes, there are people who do receive the blessings of Allah Smata. Believers, non-believers, obedience, disobedience, Muslims, Christians, Jews, atheists, everybody gets, right? But there are certain barakat, there are certain blessings. Allah clearly says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَحَدَ الْقُرَىٰ 
if the people of the towns were to believe and have taqwa, piety, right, righteousness, لَفَتَّحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ We are going to open for them بَرَكَاتِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ الْأَرْضِ The blessings from the heavens and the earth. So you can see it seems that it's almost like conditional. That belief and taqwa has to be there. And in Ramadan also, our all aim, as Quran also says, when we fast, Allah clearly says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُمْ That perhaps the desire is that we try to achieve that taqwa. So when we believe and have taqwa, the blessings of Allah will be open for us. So when I commit sins, what happens, right? Before I do that, let us try to understand the definition of the word sin, which is an English word, but the words which are used in Islamic literature is zanb and ism. Alif, tha, and mim ism, and zanb. Dha, noon, and ba, zan, right? Zanub is plural. No. So ism and zanb are, these are sin, right? It is disobeying the injunctions of the Lord and the failure to comply with his wishes. Subhanallah, you can see Allah has wished something. And one of them things is that, for example, is ask that you fast in the month of Ramadan. And I decide not to do that. Or is asked me that I should not lie. And if I decide to lie, right, all this will be sins. It was against the wish of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is committing an action but it's displeasing to Almighty Allah, to the Lord. Something which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The creator, the provider, the Rabb, the Lord, right? Due to the harm it entails the individual or society. Now why has Allah decided, for example, why has Allah asked not to lie, not to backbite, not to steal, not to cheat, because it harms me and also the society. Not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep in mind. Allah is not harmed by this thing, by my committing sins. Not only that, if the entire world were to commit sins, so Allah will not be harmed. It is we who are going to be harmed and the society, right? Or by abandoning an action that has been obligated by him. If Allah has said it's wajib for us to fast, and I abandon this thing, by missing out the benefits it entails to individual or society. When we fast, there are benefits. SubhanAllah, you'll be surprised. One day I was visiting my doctor, and uh, then he asked me to do something, so I told him that today I'm fasting. It was not month of Ramadan, which is known that people are fasting. It was at some other time I was fasting. And he said, it's a good thing. He said, what you are doing is a good thing. Don't worry about it. No. He says, even I am fasting. He's not a Muslim, but even I'm fasting by having my breakfast early in the morning. I would miss my uh, what, uh, lunch and then have late dinner, you can see. That's what we do, right? You can imagine. But what we do, we do in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the point here is that you can see fasting even today is recognized as a benefit. So when we miss out, we miss out on the benefit for ourselves and on the society. Again, the benefit is not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, see that when we abandon an action that is obligated by missing out the benefits it entails to individual and society. Hence, a sin is contradictory to the spirit of obedience. You know? And that's why it's known also as isyan. In Arabic also known as as. You know? it, 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 that means one who disobeys, right? So isyan also is a sin. Our scholars of ethics, akhlaqiyat, they tell us that a sinner commits a sin, such an act that when she or he gives into a faculties of anger and desire or the faculty of reason and intellect, Allah has given us faculties, the abilities, the powers of intellect, of reasoning. When our anger or our desire overrun the faculty of action, so a faculty of intellectual and reason, this is how we commit sins. This is what our uh, uh, you know, scholars of Akhlaqiyat tell us. The sinner is deceived by the inner soul, by shaitan, or fellow human beings, all of whom wrongfully promise him with pleasure, lust, wealth, power, fame, and even eternity. Some believe, you know, some believe ignorance can become the main reason, that because of the ignorance that we are committing this sin. So you can see either it's because of ignorance, on account of misleading from shaitan, from our own soul, from even fellow human being, right? And what does shaitan promise, or what do people promise us, for example, fame, wealth, right? Pleasure, lust, all those things, right? and sometimes even ignorance. Ignorance also is the biggest reason that people commit sins. They don't realize it. 
How can, for example, a Muslim run in a Muslim masjid? A fellow Muslim goes to a masjid where people have gathered to say their ibadat, to say the prayers on day of Friday. He just goes there and he is full of you know, belt, for example, and just blasts himself, killing thousands, hundreds of people and injuring some people, right? This happens. This is only an account of ignorance, that somebody has tried to brainwash him to say that, for example, the Shias or so-and-so are kafir, so you can just go into a masjid of Shias or to Imam Bargas and just blast yourself. So that ignorance is there, right? So it could be ignorance, it could be all those reasons which make us commit sin. When it comes to ignorance, there's a beautiful hadith from Imam Hassan Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa I'm just using this hadith because there are many hadiths, but especially this because in a few days, you know, just on Sunday evening, we are going to celebrate his birth, right? Imam is a beautiful hadith. He says, La fakra kal jahal. Subhanallah. It's just a short hadith, but such a powerful statement. Imam says, There is no poverty like what? Like ignorance. You know, if, you, if I ask anybody what is poverty, you'll see everybody will use different kind of definition. The one who does not have a shelter, the one who cannot, for example, clothe himself, the one who, for example, sleeps hungry or thirsty, right? But Imam says, no, la fakra kal jahal. There is no poverty like ignorance. And this is what really hurts the Muslims when you find that Muslims are killing fellow Muslims. Look at, for example, as an example only, right? That what is happening today in Ukraine, yeah? We know what is happening, and the whole world is condemned what the neighboring country, because it's powerful, is doing to this country, right? But see the kind of condemnation and all these things which are happening, right? And the help which Ukrainians are receiving. If one tenth of this kind of condemnation was done against those who attacked Yemenis, right? One tenth of kind of help which had happened, this would not happen. For the last six years or even more, the Yemenis have been facing so much difficulty. There is so much poverty, so much you know, destruction, all the kind of infrastructure, schools, you, know, you can see houses, hospitals, everything has been destroyed by a neighbor, same. A powerful neighbor is attacking Yemen, right? But it is a powerful neighbor which has all the kind of influence, the world is quiet. So the condemnation we find against the attack, those who attack Ukraine, right? And all the kind of help which Ukraine has help, uh, received from the Western world, right? If one-tenth of this help was afforded, given to, to the Yemenis, and one-tenth of the condemnation was done against those who attack Yemen, we would not have found this war continuing, right? So you can see that this is happening, that people are just buying into this ignorance and wrong propaganda. Now we say that we say deceived by sometimes internal soul and even human beings, because yes, it is shaitan also who deceives. But keep in mind, the hadith says that in the month of Ramadan, this is the hadith from the Prophet, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says, when the month of Ramadan enters, this hadith has been quoted by Sheikh Al Mufid in his Kitab Al Amali, which is a online. In Marhum Mullah Askar, may Allah you know, elevate his uh, status. He translated this book into English, and it's available online. In this book, there's a hadith from the Prophet that Allah says, commands to the keepers of paradise and Jahannam. See what Allah says. O Ridwan, Ridwan is the one who keeps, who is the gatekeeper of Jannat, Ridwan. O Ridwan, open the gates of paradise. O Malik, shut the gates of hellfire. Malik is the keeper of Jahannam. You know, shut, shut the gates of hellfire. From those who observe the fast in, from, in the Ummah of Muhammad, right? O Jibreel, descend on the earth and put every rebellious shaitan into the shekels. Fetter them by the necks and throw them into the depth of seas so that they may not spoil the fast of those from the ummah of my beloved prophet, right? So you can see that this is what prophet says. So in the month of Ramadan, shaitan is in chain, is shekel. Then how can we still commit sins? How can we still cheat? How can we still lie? How can we still listen to wrong things? How can we still uh, what, uh, do gibbet, welcome? That means there is something else besides shaitan, right? It is our own nafsi ammara. It could be the influence of others, right, which happen. 
So you can see that these are all the causes that we you know, perform this thing. And sometimes, in fact, shaitan, you know, when we commit sins, he would try to you know, promise us lust, wealth, influence, power, fame, even to the extent that shaitan even sometimes promise eternity. Eternity, that means, no, if you commit this thing, you will be rich forever. Forever you'll be rich. For example, we are told not to buy lotto tickets, right? It's not allowed. It's not allowed. All the mushtaid says, there is a, across the board, this is the fatwa, that you cannot buy a lottery ticket, right? Even then, shaitan would say, two dollars, three dollars, how does it, it's not going to make you poor. You already spend, for example, one dollar, 50 cents in coffee, two dollars in this thing. Three dollars is not going to harm you. And you're already in the mall, right? Everybody's buying, why don't you buy? And you can see what they are announcing. This time, for example, it will be millions of dollars, right? Shaitan would tell you that you'll become rich forever after this. So go for it, right? So these are the promises Shaitan gives us. In fact, subhanAllah, Quran is telling us, Surah Al-Araf again, same surah, ayat number 20. When, how did Shaitan mislead Adam and Hawa? Quran is telling us, مَا نَهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا عَنْ هَذِي الشَّجَرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ Malakaini or Takuna Miller Khalidain. Khalidin, right? He says that your Lord has not forbidden you from this tree. You know, lest you should become angels or you can become immortal. So he said that this is only because Allah did not want to become you to become angels. Allah did not want to become you to become immortal. That is why he has you know, asked you not to go near this tree. If you do that, you'll become angels. You'll become immortal. That means you'll never die. This is Quran is telling us. So you can see shaitan is the one who gives us these wrong promises. Right? And that's why we commit sin. So what is the immediate outcome of our sins? Right? Sins have got many outcomes. We will discuss with you based on a book known as Faith and Reason. Faith and Reason, again, is available online. It has been authored by Ayatollah Mahdi Hadavi Tehrani. May Allah give him long life. He is there in Tehran still. Right? And he has answered this thing that what are the effects of sins, right? I've taken that and of course other, other sources also. Number of things which comes out of committing sins. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give us the fiqh to stay away from this thing. Throughout the year, throughout the life, especially more so in the month of Ramadan, right? First is the darkening and hardening of one's heart. This heart is pure, subhanAllah. The way slat is, you know, for example, you go to the market and buy a slat, you know, or blackboard, anything, it's so clean, so completely you know, fresh, nothing has been written, right? That is how the heart is. But this heart goes on becoming, gets darkened as we go on sin. One sin, second sin, it goes on darkening, right? Not only darkened, but it also becomes hardened. It becomes hard and darkened, right? The soul which Allah designated as the recipient of divine revelation, this is the same soul of Rasulullah which received the, the revelation, the wahi. This is the soul, right? And this is the soul by which Allah says, nafs ma sawaha, by the soul which he has designed. Allah also does the qasam by this, no, nafs, the same nafs, right? Which is so pure, right? That Allah does the qasam of it. Allah will not do qasam of something which is dirty, which is no, polluted, right? But something which is pure. nafs ma sawaha. By the, by the soul and the way Allah has, and the one who has designed it, right? Allah does the custom of it, right? Says that if we go on committing sins, what happens? The sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq, Salawatullahi wa salamu He says, everyone is born with a pure heart. Subhanallah. Everyone. Everyone, that means even a, a Muslim, a non Muslim. Doesn't matter. Every child. Every child is Muslim, right? is born with a pure heart. When he or she commits a sin, a black spot is formed on his heart. If he or she seeks forgiveness, the spot is erased. But if he does not seek forgiveness and continues to sin, the black spot becomes bigger and bigger, finally covering the whole heart. Let me say on the footnote, something very special now. Marhum Ayatollah Khomeini has said in his book, 40 Hadiths, which I know uh, scholars have mentioned in this from him a number of times. But one point about this, he says that you know, when people read some kind of hadith like this, they say, since I commit a sin, there's a black spot. If I do istighfar, that spot will just go away. So let me enjoy something. In the evening, I'll do istighfar. 
Agha says, no, no, no. This, this you are fooling yourself. You are just fooling yourself that you commit a sin and do istighfar. Commit a sin, do istighfar. I said, no, no. Then he gives an example, such a simple example, subhanAllah. Since I read this book many, many years ago, but I have not forgotten this example. So this, is, this, is, this is wisdom, right? Some of the scholars are so much blessed with the wisdom that it is outstanding. He said, just take a piece of paper, right? Take a piece of paper which is clean completely, fresh piece of paper. Take a pencil and eraser, Agha says. Keep a pencil and eraser. Write anything what you want on this piece of paper, right? Write it, and then after that, erase it. Write again. After that, erase it. Write again, erase it. He said, tell me one thing. If you do this thing once, twice, thri three times, ten times, what happens to the paper? Is that paper like that original paper? Although you have erased, you've got a very good eraser. You erase it immediately. After, it's, it's not like, it's in the same way. Don't think that once you start committing sins and do istighfar and do committing sins and do istighfar, that your heart will remain that pure. No, it will not. You already now made your heart impure, right? If not completely, then at least you can see that because of committed sin. So keep in mind that when sometimes even if you were to commit sins, and do istighfar, let us do istighfar, such a kind of istighfar that after which don't commit sin. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. The ayat of Quran which is telling us that when we commit sins, what happens to our heart? This is ayat number 74, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2. Allah says, what a beautiful ayat. It says, ثُمَّ قَسَدْ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ you know, then their hearts became hardened. Summa kasat kasa is hardened. Kul kalb is hard, kulub is hard. Summa kasat kulubhum mimbadi zalik after that. Faya kal hijara aw ashad du kaswa. It is like a stone, but not only that, even harder, you know. More more harder than stone. Then Allah says, min al hijarati. No, he says, but there are some stones from which even streams gush. But a sinner has a heart which such a hardened heart that it is of no use. Even the sometimes these stones, even sometimes has the ability that water come out of it. But we are worse than that. Do you see how Allah gives the example? So, Mominin, this only happens when we commit sins, that our hearts get hardened harder than the stone. Such a stone which is of no use. Such as there are some stones which even gives forth water, but this hard will not happen. Do you see that that hard which which will continue committing sins has now become oblivion of everything around him. He or she is just you know, immersed in his lust and pleasure in what they are doing, just on account of committing sins, right? So that is the first outcome of committing sins. The second outcome of committing sins is depriving the sinner of knowledge of the divine secrets and notice. You know, when we commit sins, that inner knowledge, divine secrets, Allah has his own. Remember, just now I told you that some of the scholars are blessed with what wisdom. Allah says, no, yu'til hikmah man yishal. First Allah says, he gives his wisdom to whomsoever he wishes. This is ayat number 269, Surah Al-Baqarah. Muminin is such a powerful ayat. You know, just recite this verse again and again, especially in the month of Ramadan. One ayat, recitation of one ayat is reciting the entire Quran, right? The carries the word of the entire Quran. When you want to memorize the Quran, do it in the month of Ramadan. I don't know how long it takes you for me, person like all in this age, right? If I were to memorize a surah, it takes me so long. Maybe I have to repeat it three times, four times, ten times sometimes, right? To be able to memorize it. Do it in the Ramadan. Because in the month of Ramadan, what happens? Every time you recite an ayat, the reward is you know, reciting the entire Quran. So Allah says, Yotil hikmah man yasha. Allah gives wisdom to whomsoever he wishes. Waman yotil hikmah fakat utiya khayran kathira. Subhanallah. Allah says, He blesses his wisdom to whomsoever he wishes. The one who is given wisdom is been given an abundance of good. When Allah says abundance of good, imagine what is abundance. Allah who is source of all treasury, source of all good, source of all wealth, right? He says, Man hikmah The abundance of khair, right? By what wisdom? So when a person who commits sins is deprived of this wisdom. Have you seen sometimes people talk things 
And when we are sitting there, I'm so sorry to say, and this is, some of these people are even elder in age, right? They've seen the world. Dunya dekhi un logo Dunya dekhi. But you see them speaking things which does not make any sense, right? You say, what is he talking about? What is she talking about? This does not make any sense. This is like almost foolish. It's garbage, right? What is it? It lacks wisdom. What is his deprived the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when a person commits sins, is deprived of inner secrets of knowledge. Allah has so many secrets, so many beautiful knowledge, which is so depth, right? Read the Quran, look at the hadith. When you just read the Quran, look at the hadith, and you ponder over it, you find that you know, it, it gives you so much of it, right? I'll give you an example, subhanAllah. There is a great scholar, may Allah raise his status, Marhum Shaheed Ayatullah Muhammad Bakr Sadr. You must have heard his name, right? Bakr Sadr. He was a master, that person. Whenever I read his book, you know, he quotes the ayat of Quran and then explains about it for passages, sometimes even pages. And I say to myself, SubhanAllah, I have read this ayat so many times, but I didn't think what he's thinking. Do you see how much? He was killed by Saddam, his age was 43 years only. Imagine at that time. He was so much learned and full of that. At that age, he was able to author so many books, right? People went to him and said that, Aha, you are so learned. Why don't you publish your Risala, Risala Amalia, so that people can follow Islamic law, you know? And he said that, no, since my teacher, Ayatollah al khui is alive, I cannot do that. Do you see this thing? This itself is a wisdom. Do you see? This itself is a wisdom of his answer. So when a person commits sins, the divine knowledge you know, is deprived. Thus a person is least concerned of you know, un 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 undivised pleasure or ridha, right? Let me end by saying ridha of Allah. When a person is committing sin, he is least concerned about ridha of Allah. That will Allah is pleased or not. I just do what I think is right. Whatever pleases me. Whatever gives me pleasure, whatever you know is of my interest, whatever gives me fame, that is fame, that is my importance. No. Rida of Allah is so important I mean, before I end the majlis. Look at how important Rida of Allah is. When we inshallah go to Jannat, Ilahi, I mean inshallah, we all go to Jannat. When we go to Jannat, we'll be given all the name of the Jannat. You know, you, as Quran says, you no, know, gardens and waters and fruits and uh, uh, no huris and uh, what uh, meat and everything right is there then the question comes after all that nemat what will you, will you still be asking for if everything is there what will you still be looking for no one thing will still want is rida of allah subhanahu the divine pleasure that will not end even a person who is in paradise he or she is still be wanting one thing and that's rida of allah so a person who commits sins will not be concerned about the rida of allah we pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah in this month ramadan we are completing now 13th fast today. Ya Allah, accept our fast and allow, and, and, and allow us and give us strength to stay away from all the sins. Wa salli ala Muhammad wa ala al-Tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Rahimallahu man kar al-Fatiha. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil al